The head of Netflix snatches Megan by the shirt and yells, We're treated like cows munching on boring stories, do something. Howdy, pals. Hello, and thank you for tuning in Royal Family News Update, where we will be bringing you the latest breaking news about the royal couple most infamous for their hypocrisy, Harry and Meghan Markle. The Hollywood official guide variety seemed to have turned against Harry and Meghan after publishing an article calling them a one-trick pony and declaring they were ready for the glue factory for their constant complaints about the royal family. There was warranted doubt, as stated in an article published in the publication's premium online content, as to whether or not the couple had gone to the well one too many times with their account of treatment by the British royal family, the article claims. With Harry's book Spare coming out in the first quarter of the following year, the president and chief media analyst at Variety Intelligence Platform, Andrew Wallenstein, wondered how much longer this story could go on. That book will be followed by the pair's controversial 2021 Oprah Winfrey interview and the recently released six-part Netflix documentary series Attacking the Royal Family. The story shows the already committed Sussexes how their profession views them. About 2.5 million people in the UK saw the documentary on Netflix on the day it premiered, attesting to the popularity of the service. Cone, there are 220 million Netflix users, but only 2.2 million of them saw Harry and Meghan. Do you consider that a triumph? The only people who watched that trash were the gossiping women who hung their laundry while listening to it. Many people probably watched the documentary to see what kind of nonsense they would propose next. Since they are now on the outside, with no other royals interacting with them, they will have a hard time finding new things to complain about. But the Variety article predicted that once Harry's book was published, readers might notice that as the couple's carefully timed disclosures begin to look scripted, the backlash that had begun to emerge accelerates. He went on to say that as they play the victim card again and again, even the dimmest of brains among their devotees will eventually grow tired of their oh, woe is us routine. Mr. Wallenstein even compared them to a burlesque act, saying that from their posh California mansion, the couple's complaints about being persecuted could be seen as a tone-deaf message in light of the economic uncertainty that existed around the world. He wrote in an article titled It's Well Past Time for Harry and Meghan 2.0 that the couple's separation from the monarchy had left them with few new discoveries to share with the public. This steed has been put down, so perhaps it's time to retire him to the glue factory. He explained that their strategy has always been the same. People listen to their sob story, but they stay to be praised. However, that strategy seems unlikely to attract and keep an audience that isn't interested in royal gossip. The article claimed that the couple's rumored $100 million Netflix agreement would not involve a reality show that was exactly what their show had been, but Netflix later denied this. It was announced this week that Harry and Meghan will be executive producers on the already commissioned show Live to Lead which will feature interviews with leaders who are dedicated to changing the world. One of the visitors, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, released a statement in which she claimed she had been committed to the project well before the Sussexes. Nobody can deny that the royal family is essential to their existence. They'll be old news by the end of 2023, when they've revealed everything there is to be revealed. My guess is that Meghan will grow tired of her dwindling celebrity status, dump Harry, and start dating one of the Hollywood elite. In other words, they have done nothing to warrant their prominence beyond their royal ancestry. It's odd that even the donations they brag about making, like $5,000 in Starbucks cards or 30 Christmas presents, are so paltry. In my opinion, their next step is either QVC or a full-fledged reality show. Alternatively, Meghan will merely hold a position of influence. People like that don't stick around for long because even the most dedicated fan eventually gets sick of hearing the same old thing. A few people in the UK have met their end because they ate the same story too many times. As one insider put it, for a very long time, I've held the opinion that they're worthless apart from the monarchy. They need to look like they belong there in order to get credit for it. I think the Obamas, Cloonies, etc., would rather be friends with the royal family than these two, 
simply to give the impression that they are well connected. However, I believe that they had to switch from an aggressive strategy because they failed to account for the possibility of losing their titles and their children's titles. The documentary's treatment of Britain's history is blatantly passive-aggressive. It's meant to lead you to a specific conclusion without actually saying so. Yes, Harry was the cocky, happy to be in the company of his brother and Catherine young man whom I believe the majority of the UK had a soft spot for, despite my belief that he had his own share of psychological challenges behind the scenes. The vast majority of his friends and family were happy for him and his soulmate. And then it got really grippy. As soon as she got in his way, Netflix started filming them. I am sure she's keeping meticulous notes on everything he does wrong, from leaving the toilet seat up to failing to ask how she's doing 85 times a day, in anticipation of the release of the When Meg Left Harry documentary. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex never seem to stop complaining about the world catering to their every whim whether it be in the United Kingdom or, more recently, Canada. While complaining about the harassment they face from the paparazzi, they sell their integrity to the media and streaming services like Netflix. Ignoring them is the most effective strategy, as well as the most hurtful. Occasionally, they'll win lefty awards for some nonsense, but you can safely ignore them. My country's royal family just scored a major victory there. Our king is not fooled by Twitter or a few obnoxious Americans. This couple has no clue why they are disliked. After about a decade in rehabilitation, maybe things will look up for them if they finally grasp the reasons why they are reviled in so many parts of the world. Beginning in the new year, there will be classes on emotional intelligence. The problem is that nobody is interested in interacting with them anymore. And now they have contaminated everything they touch. Given how badly they wanted to keep being half of the royal family, doing some of the tasks and accepting all of the benefits, it's hard to take their endless complaints seriously. Either it was unbearable to the point where they needed to get out, or it wasn't that bad. The best thing they can do is that one thing, and that's it. They both lack the maturity to examine their own actions and motivations, preferring instead to cast blame externally. I do like to hear their side of the story from a real journalist rather than a scripted host like Oprah or a friend like Tom Bradley. What do you think about Harry and Meghan always telling the same old stories and reliving the same boring details? Leave a comment with your thoughts. We sincerely hope you've learned something from this video. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe, like, and share videos. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this newsletter and hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.